Hello everybody and welcome to Donkey Kong Country. My name's Cody. And I'm Foo. Welcome Fu, to the Donkey Kong Country. Uh, this is another one of these temple stages, except there's beavers in here. Uh, I don't know what they're doing in, in ancient temples, to be honest. Like, I've never seen any beavers in Indiana Jones just, like, exploring ancient temples. But I guess they get up to a lot of things. Um, <laughs> you know. I get the feeling that I should not stand under this. Well, standing under it might be okay, but you definitely want to get running pretty quick once you are under it. Because it's going to fall and chase you. There you go. So the Indiana Jones nod was definitely correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is this is the second of the temple levels. Uh, it's pretty clean in terms of the design. It's a straightforward escalation from the, uh, the previous temple level. There you had the, the beavers on wheels moving in kind of local sort of paths. Now they get up and they chase you. Um, yeah. Trying to forth, you know, faster gameplay than we've seen in some of the levels. Right, speaking of faster gameplay, you may notice that I am much like a certain hedgehog going fast. Uh, and let me tell you why. It's because, uh, thanks to, I believe, Sabo on the Zelda Universe yeah. forums, yeah. in our uh, Zelda Universe, we I made a thread about it so that people could follow along. And someone said, do you know how to run? <laughs> um, you know, and I said, you know, you learn new things every day. Um, so it turns out you can run in this game, which would explain why I was so confused, because whenever I picked up a barrel, I started to run faster. Uh, and it turns out it was because I was holding B when I was grabbing the barrel. Um, and so I was actually running but only when I had the barrel, because otherwise I had no reason to hold down the, um, you know, the button. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I never noticed. And I think the reason for that, personally, is that it was, when you played these games, they never felt at the time that they had to tell you that you could hold down your action button to run. Um, yeah. That was just the basic assumption that when, you know, whatever it was, 70, 80% of all games being released for platformers, there were certain things that you just were culturally expected to know, and that was how to run was certainly one of them. There you go. Look, I found a secret, because there was a big arrow made of bananas pointing to the secret. <laughs> yeah, not so subtle about this one. They do that just to remind you, um, you know, of the exploration aspect of this game. Have you been looking for secrets? You probably missed some. Here's an obvious one to remind you that, uh, that that's one of our goals to have you do. <laughs> oh, and you might actually win this bonus game? I don't know if I've seen you win a bonus game yet. I'm all nervous and tense. There you go. Um, and I'm glad you did, because it kind of fits in with what we were just talking about here. You see Diddy celebrating. Um, mm -hmm. And this this is actually more significant than you might think. This game, in a lot of ways, wanted to be a, a Sonic killer. Um, at the time, you know, Sonic was definitely the biggest property in gaming. Yeah, and, uh, it turns out Sonic had... committed suicide. Um... Well... The Sonic killer was Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, or it was possibly Shadow the Hedgehog, or Silver the Hedgehog, or like Octobead the Clam, uh, or whatever other stupid... Sorry, sorry, you mentioned Sonic the Hedgehog and I got a bit mad. Um, <laughs> this, this is before, this is, this is 1994. Sonic is cool, and one of the reasons Sonic is cool, one of the things that explicitly Sony said that they were looking for was a, a, a protagonist with attitude. Um, and this is a, this is an <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's such a '90s thing. Incredibly critical '90s phrase when when Zordon summons teenagers to be Power Rangers. They're very yeah. explicitly teenagers with attitude. When ah, uh, when the after ten thousand years, I am free. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't get defeated by teenagers with attitude. When uh, when the WWE starts to sell, oh yeah, um, the attitude so era. Exactly, it's the biggest buzzword of the '90s, and um, and Sonic was very much a character with attitude. And most of the Sonic clones were just they were also animals with attitude. Um, right. Well, because so here we go. Yeah. We got, well, we a lot of DK's... the a lot of the point of all of the. I guess marketing against Nintendo was 
we do what Nintendo don't kind of thing and that's it's always been like that like it's the same now it's the like the Xboxes and the Playstations will say we've got the best we've got the best shooters we've got the best like mature games uh, and by mature they mean gore and that kind of thing um, you know and Nintendo's for kids and that's always been the case like Sonic was meant to be a less or not quite less family friendly but less you know he tapped his foot, you know, impatiently when you weren't moving and all that kind of thing. He had attitude, exactly. you know? Yeah. No, and yeah, and, and attitude really is the perfect word. Like, if, for those of us who grew up in the 90s, we know exactly what it means. It doesn't mean, you know, a bad person. Stone Cold Steve Austin was definitely not the bad guy. Um, right. But when you heard that he was, you know, it was the attitude era, that, that meant something. Yeah. Um, and I guess... What you could think about this game is the first real challenge to Nintendo's resolve. Um, the first time where, you know, they saw that they were going to have a problem. Yeah, I'm going to have a problem, yeah. I think you can despawn it if you go backwards. But they saw that they were going to be, you know, advertised against. Oh, you, you make games for kids. You, you yeah. uh, And they could have given in, and I think that would have changed the entire history of the industry. Um, yeah. But they didn't. They gave us a game where you play as a cute little monkey with a hat, and when he wins, he throws the hat up in celebration, right? That's what we have yeah. instead. I'm 20% of the way. There you go. You're actually probably about 45% of the way through the levels, so, you know, mm. not too bad. You'll probably end up with, uh, with a little over 40% of all things considered when we're done. Yeah, I mean, well, maybe I'll be getting more secrets now that I know to look for secrets, I guess. Or once I know their their code system for like how they how they sort of signal that a secret is there. Yeah. Well, if you die here, um, there is another one of those puzzle solving kind of secrets. If you walk backwards at the start of this level, uh, you right. might want to check that out. Um, but yeah, so this is this is the culmination of the. Um, the atmosphere that they've been trying to create throughout this forest world. You yeah. started um, on the forest floor, you moved up through the treetop villages, now you've reached the canopy at sunset, and we get this nice, um, you know, evening scene to play with. Uh, you know, I think it's a pretty nice looking level. Maybe not as memorable as the, as the village itself, but, uh, you know, you can... I, it's, it's hard to really wrap your head around how big a deal these graphics were at the time, um, and how much Nintendo was willing to put on the line to put out a game like this. Yeah. Um, bringing it back to the idea that this this was a, a Sonic killer and a game that, that had to establish that Nintendo was going to, um, going to be able to extend the 16-bit era another two years, waiting for yeah. the 64. Um, this stuff like the background here really makes that statement. Yeah, and I mean, well, you can't say that this is a game without attitude, because even Lanky Kong has apparently attitude in this game. He's throwing barrels at me. I don't know what his problem is. I think he's that, mad that, that he's not playable. That's not Lanky Kong, actually. That's that's Mankey Kong. Um, the that, relationship yeah. between the two orangutans is not clear, but uh, Mankey is described in the, uh, the instruction book, I believe, as a Kong family reject. Um, so we're not sure exactly what happened, but it was probably pretty dramatic. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. The um, reason that we is to, uh, to introduce the the classic Donkey Kong gameplay of, of jumping over barrels and yet still have the story of, of DK as the protagonist. Right. And so and I it's think a it's, cute little yeah. looking at it. Yeah. And I mean, it's, uh, you know, it reminds me of a funny joke. Oh. You see, there's Gandalf, and then yeah. there's his brother Mandalf. Okay, that's the funny joke. That's that's it. Okay, great. I love it's, it. It was very funny. Okay, you handled those those levels pretty well. Yeah, I did. Cranky's cabin. <laughs> it's hard to find peace and quiet anymore with you around. That's the spirit. Take that can. We used to have to survive with the two-frame walk. <laughs> Sometimes our sprites used to change size for no apparent reason. We never had any of this fancy 3D stuff. Oh no, we had to survive on what we had. 
And what little we did have, we were happy with. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, look, I know human nature and I know that that is... Well, they are rang into tangs or gorillas or whatever. They seem to be different types of apes and they're all apparently part of the same family. Despite being different species, but... Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh... It's always kind of been implied that, that Kong might be more of a title than, um, than an actual family last name. And you, you inherit the mantle of certain Kong as you go along. But uh, who knows? So Rare the, certainly was in no rush to explain themselves. So there's like... There's a whole... There's like an inheritor of the grand title of Lanky Kong. And of, uh, <laughs> see, what would be funny is if you get a... You know, there's like Tiny Kong, and Tiny Kong passes it on to the next Tiny Kong, and the next Tiny Kong is as big as Chunky Kong. Um, yeah. But inherits the title anyway. Um, Alright. Oh, here's uh, whatever face the clam that I was talking about it's killing clams. Sonic earlier. Yeah, so as we said way back at the start of World 3, um, you know, they've. they've made a conscious effort to upgrade the difficulty by introducing projectiles. Yeah. Um, we need a new model in each sort of environment to do that, so in the forest we got the mini neckies. Yeah. Uh, but in water levels we have these uh, these clams who are going to start spitting pearls at you. Yeah. Um, the, the water levels do kind of keep the, uh, or change the movement style around. We have a lot more vertical movement involved. Yeah. But it's not the same sort of vertical movement that you would see in um, in other platformers of the age, like like Super Mario World. Um, you're still very much confined to these thin spaces and the challenges that can be created in them. Yeah. Um, and frankly, if they gave you uh, this level, you know, arranged side to side, Gameplay-wise, it might not be really different. Um, actually, can we pause for a sec? And uh, we're back. All yeah, right. sorry about that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm uh, saying that the <laughs> the water levels, um, and in particular this one, this is probably where it's most significant. Yeah. Um, they keep the the thin level design that kind of is associated with more classic arcade games than than platformers yeah. of the era. Um, but because the swimming mechanics are something that they can play with, because swimming up and down, side to side... Look, um, look. Yes, you found out hunger. And so on are different, and because they can they can um, enhance that by including a, something like Ongard, which definitely has different side to side and vertical motion. Um, his, yeah. his horizontal motion, he's attacking. His vertical motion, he's vulnerable. Um, the, the kind of twisted layout of these water levels um, allows for a lot of, of different gameplay. Oh, it's just not, not identical to what it would be if you just took the same sorts of puzzles and laid them out left to right. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's good that they explore that sort of design in this game because when uh, you get more options for vertical movement in the next game, when you get the ability to toss your partner, uh, in DKC2, yeah. that allows for the same sort of um, design flexibility in non-water levels and leads to some of the best levels in, in DKC2. Um, right, these sharks kinda, are giving me trouble. The, the sharks are a pain in the butt. This, this is not, not an easy level, that's for sure. But now that I know the secret... <laughs> yeah, um, another kind of classic... Uh, trope for the series that gets established in in, um, in water levels and levels where they're really letting you explore vertical movement like this is yeah. the the walls that you can walk through. Yeah, I'm sort of starting to get an idea of what. Oh, keep losing that, keep losing that swordfish. Of of what kind of uh, secret? There's a sort of internal consistency to their secrets. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. My, I played this game originally um, with with my younger brother. Um, it uh -huh. was kind tooth. of my the, yes. Uh, uh, if people who are in Zelda universe know him as the tooth and the squeeze, um, and the way that is that, that not his real name? Just, <laughs> no, his name is Colin. Uh, oh. The way that he justifies DKC two being his favorite game 
is by pointing out um, that when he plays any other platformer, even highly toted modern platformers like Meat Boy or, or something like that, um, he he sees a certain setup in in the game. And if it's a good platformer, it will reward him for exploiting that setup. Yeah. And if it's a bad platformer, it won't. And he was trained to have that sort of recognition, in his opinion, playing DKC. Um, so when we when we start a game and we're playing through it, and he says, you know, oh, in, in Donkey Kong, I would have to do this, then he tries it. If it works out, that's a good game, in his mind. Um, if it doesn't get him anything, then suddenly the game's a waste of time. Uh, yeah. Because you definitely, definitely build that instinct, um, starting here, but it... it it right. uh, accelerates rapidly in DKC2. And I've noticed that in that kind of internal consistency thing, like in Mario games, in the new Super Mario Bros. series, um, like I will jump at an empty space that's just to the right of a pipe or something and get yeah. a one up. And I didn't know it was there, but I know the kind of secrets that the 2D Mario series traditionally has. And it right. rewards you for that. Yeah. Um, and, and it's the same with same with Donkey Kong Country. I just use Mario as an example for everything because I'm more familiar with Mario than I am with Donkey Kong. Oh yeah, um, sure. I mean, obviously, um, you know, the the design principles that that Rare is learning from. Um, you know, uh, Miyamoto has said explicitly that he was basically on the phone with London, you know, every day when this yeah. game was being together. Like he, the master was. <laughs> <laughs> the the word exit was there um, across a language barrier as, yeah. as this whole thing was happening, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this game um, was made not in Japan. I mean, not in North America. This was a European production. Which, yeah. Uh, which is, I mean, it's sort of obvious when you think about it, I guess, but it's not what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Especially out of a Nintendo game. Actually, you don't see much non-American, non-Japanese production of video games at all. I mean, uh, well, I guess stuff like Ubisoft and that kind of thing have branches in, like, you know, Canada and France and all this, but... Yeah, um... I, I, I'm from I'm from Edmonton, so I guess I could say Bioware Pride, but I'm not sure if there's actually such thing as Bioware Pride. So, I'll... <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, yeah, there's there's certain, and I don't know if that informs the oh, now's the game over. I don't know if that informs the the creation of the the game at all. Um, we're gonna probably end the series here. Be oh, not end the series here. That would be a Dramatic ending. Yeah. This, End this, the video this, here, oh, yeah. um, because I I should have set, gone back up to the save point to save, but I forgot. Um, so off screen, I'm going to go back and do those levels, and then we'll get back um, to where we were uh, in the next episode. Sounds good to me. Alright. See you around. Talk to you later, people. <laughs>